Hey guys, we are back again with another video in the JP speaker build. I wanted to show you what we're going to do with the front and back baffles. Um, typically, uh, speakers, you're just going to go ahead and you know do MDF, and you can you can do MDF even in this one if you want to. This one I kind of wanted to make it look a little bit nicer, and so what would I want to do? I wanted to do oak. Um, there's a couple issues with using oak or poplar or any of those types of hardwood if you want to. One is size. Typically they're three quarter inches wide. Um, and if you do three quarter inches wide, that's fine. You just have to make the speaker six inches deep instead of five and a half. And I kind of wanted to save a little space. So I really wanted to get half inch wood. If you get half inch wood though, you get these what they call hobby boards. Uh, and you pick these up once again at big box stores, any type of lumber yard or something. But typically they, there's two issues. One, they come typically around two to four feet long. Um, and we need these 12 inches wide. Now the reason why that's an issue is when you cut in a board, you actually lose whatever the, the saw's width is off the board. So you might think, oh, well, I can use one four foot board for you know, four 12 inch pieces. Well, no, you can't because you'll lose too much. By the time you get to that fourth one, you're not gonna be at 12 inches, you're gonna be off. You know, you'll get three good 12 inch cuts, but you won't get that fourth one out of it. So you have to buy another two foot or four foot board. Uh, the other issue is typically with these hobby boards, they don't come high enough. Like I, I needed a seven inches high, uh, which would typically be like a one by eight, which is you know nominal about seven and a half to seven and a quarter, depending on where you go. And so they don't make that typically in half inch sizes. Now, if you have a planer, you could plane it down. I don't. And so. What we're going to do, oh, I'm sweating, um, is we're going to actually glue these together. So we're going to take some wood glue and we're going to clamp them together to make one big baffle. The reason why we're going to do it, it saves a lot of money. Like this particular, like the oak, for two four foot sections is like 15 or 16 bucks. Um, so not bad at all. So you're looking at $15 for that and $5 for the MDS, so like 20 bucks for, to make the baffle. And we'll also know exactly where the, the main center point is, which will be really important for us later because later we're going to actually need to know where the center is to make some cuts, um, at least for the back baffle. And so I cut these about 12 inches wide, a little bit wider. And the reason why I did that is so that when we get it there, we can trim it down just a little to make sure it fits perfectly inside that speaker case that we built earlier. And um, that's it. So how we're going to do this, we're going to run some glue on the side here. And we're going to clamp these together. And they will we'll clamp them like this. okay? And hold it together and we're going to leave it sit for a day. Um, we're not going to move it or anything. And the reason why we're going to clamp it and let it sit for a day is just to keep it that way. Now if you had something like a Craig jig, I do have one, I'm not going to utilize it in this. You could use a Craig jig. You see to make sure that you utilize it in areas in which you're not going to be cutting a speaker into. Uh, so for the back panel, we'd have to use them like on the outsides, and on the front panel, we'd have to angle the screws down, at least on this, and then up in the middle. Um, it's just kind of a hassle, and honestly, uh, for this type of project, uh, gluing it should just work just fine. So that's what we're going to do with the front baffle. I'm going to go ahead and glue it and show you what that looks like. All right, guys, here it is, glued and clamped together. Try not to do what I just did. Um, unfortunately, I accidentally wiped a little bit off. You don't need to wipe this off. Wait till this dries, okay? And the reason why you want to wait till it dries, when it dries, it just bubbles up and gets hard on the surface. One, you'll know it's dry. And two, you can just take a knife of any kind, or if you have a little chisel, which is what I use, you can just chisel that right off. It comes right off. It comes out very easily, and it doesn't soak into the wood. Um, but that's it. That's a, that's all you have to do. We'll wait. The reason why we do this is one, sometimes these don't, the reason why we cut it a little long is because sometimes these don't line up exactly even and we want to make sure that we have room for error if we, we need it. Guys, real, guys, real quick, another quick tip. Um, you don't necessarily want to do that. Hey guys, real quick, another quick tip, real quick. You don't typically want to do this on top of another piece of wood because if so, that wood glue, if it 
bonds with the other piece of wood underneath it then you got this stuck on there unless you want a backer board if you want to put like a little quarter inch piece in the middle to give it more stability or something that's that's up to you but uh it doesn't typically need it but if you, you want to do that that's fine just realize if you put anything underneath it's gonna get any wood especially it's gonna get glued to it all right guys that's all for this video we will um, when all this glues, we'll go ahead and start cutting some circles and show you what the project's going to look like. As always, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Thanks.